Hey, what's going on YouTube? I know I haven't made an upload for this car for a little while, so I figure I might as well get it in today and basically show you guys how I pan the entire engine bay out after tubs are installed. That's right, I said installed. So uh, yeah, if you want to see some uh, tubs installed on a GD body WRX, stay tuned. All right, guys, so everybody knows the GD body WRX, this, you know, and it's also the same as the STI model. They were made from 2002 to 2007. They consist of the uh, Bug Eye, the Blob Eye, and the Hawk Eye. So everything that uh, you're looking at right now is basically the same throughout those years. The only thing that changed is the front end, the front fenders, the radiator support, headlights, grill, bumper, hood etc the uh, the front end but the engine bay is absolutely the same so with that said tub kit for the GD body style Impreza WRX and STI you guys are wondering how they look after they're installed they've already been welded in all the welds have been knocked down now it's just time for to go over it with the flap disc, do some metal finishing around here. That way, this piece looks like it's solid with this piece, nice and pretty. And uh, yeah, this guy doesn't like Bondo. Everybody knows from watching my channel, I don't like body filler. There's no reason to have body filler on there because it's just gonna crack. So just make it solid with metal. Do the metal finish and then you're able to prime it after and it just looks beautiful. You know it's solid. So with that said, guys, we're going to do some repair today. Obviously, we will be replacing the lower radiator support as stated earlier in the uh, JDM WRX installments that I've uploaded already. So with that said, guys, I'm going to keep on moving on, talk as quickly as possible, and uh, start putting this front end back together. That way I can start making all of my pans, get everything all nice and solid. Just like the GC body is over here. You guys can see uh, after it gets all stitched up, we go through it and uh, make sure everything's solid. You know, so everything uh, basically is penetrated the way it's supposed to be. We run a light on the back side of it to make sure that there are no pinholes. And uh, then you take a hammer to it. Make sure you don't crack any of the welds. If you do so, fix it. It's not that hard. You got a welder right next to you. You might as well use it. So, yeah, this is uh, Rumble Garage. This is what I do. All right, guys. So as you can see, I've got the bottom pans all welded in. Just went ahead and uh, just basically tacked it all in. You know, you work yourself. You know, just basically tack in your spots, and then you're gonna want to weld into those tacks after. But uh, you can get the idea how to put it in. Uh, you're going to want to weld the top side and bottom side. Also as well, you're going to want a guaranteed penetration all the way around so that when you do grind this down nice and smooth, you have a backer weld. You know that it's solid and you also know that there is a consistency of, uh, actually I should say there is a adequate mill thickness of the steel. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for it to not crack later down the road because obviously this is going to have pressure here so that's what we're trying to do is put structure in this and uh yeah if you don't do it right the first time it will crack and of course you don't want to paint this and then have any cracks happen or acclimate later on down the road so make sure you do it the right way as you can see the the top is welded but from the back side portion this is what you're looking at you know you can see some of the seams and whatnot so you do want to get in here and put that back weld in here seam all that up, make sure it is solid and all the metal is atomized properly so that you don't have any corrosion issues. This is now a weak portion here if you leave it unaddressed. So make sure you go through and uh, do all the back welds. As you guys can see, everything is welded also from the back side. You grind it down nice and smooth. And uh, again, I keep saying it and I'll say it over and over again. I use bed liner. It's the best. I don't use undercoating. I don't rely on the materials that the OEM factory are supplying for these cars. So with that said, 
it rots for a reason because there is no rust prevention. So you got to get in there and prevent it. In my case, I like to seal it with bed liner so that I am past the whole rust prevention. I'm rust proof. Yeah, it's possible. All right, so got the side pan in and everything, as you can see, is right at OEM fitment. I leave just the little tong or the little tab that where the actual radiator support is going to uh, actually weld to. You can see the spot welds here. That's all OEM. So with the OEM fitment, all of the plates are all the same alignment. I'm able to put it up and weld it in, tack it in place, and now basically just run a bead just like I've done here, such as so and then uh, be able to replicate the other side as well, and then so on. All right, so after it's all stitched up, everything is all solid all the way around. I've gone ahead and put in the other pan and uh, got it all tacked in. As you can see, I left all the tacks here just so I can give a demonstration that everything is there. These tacks are to help you guys. They're basically your little fingers that are gonna hold it there and the structure that you're looking for. The, uh, the reason why you tack it in place is for metal distortion. Uh, once you tack it here and then tack it here, it's able to distort in between the tacks. So you're, you basically don't have to worry about any distortion as far as the fact that if you just started here and then just started running a stitch all the way down, all of this panel will actually get wavy and uh, the whole bottom pan will actually dome and it'll crinkle. And that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for some nice straight pans such as so. And that way everything lines up because again, guys, you guys want the fenders to line up nice and perfect. Uh, this car was in an accident, so obviously you can see a lot of the damage, which is the main reason why I went all the way to the top of the actual fender mount itself so that I could you know, repair this the correct way. Um, you can kind of see right here is kind of arced this way a little bit. So it does uh, this and then it's, you know, kind of curves a little bit here and then straight back down. So I ended up having to fix that with the uh, inside weld there. So I'll go ahead and metal finish that. That way this has a nice edge again and everything is even just like the other side, you know, and that's what we're looking for guys. You know, what's the great thing about Subarus is symmetry. One side is exactly like the other, and it's pretty easy to build these. That's why I call them Lego cars. You know, it just takes a little bit of time, and uh, planning it out, you should be able to address the situation the right way. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I'm Bill Schneider. This is Roma Garage. I build only cars with the stars. Stay tuned for the next JDM WRX build installment. Have a good day.